Hello everybody and welcome to lesson two on linear equations. Today we're going to graph linear equations using the slope intercept method. I think you will like this. It's uh, almost artistic. Uh, I urge you to get graph paper, guys. I know that your teachers would want you to have uh, graph paper and you'll save yourself a lot of mistakes and mental anguish. Please get some graph paper. Now I have a pad of graph paper beside me. I have four pads in my study, um, but it's too small for the purpose of this uh, video and I had to create my own graph. When you use graph paper, you'll have wonderful success and it'll be easier than what I'm doing right now, although this will work. Uh, it's, it's a lot harder when, when I don't have graph paper. Okay, let's proceed. So the uh, first equation that we're going to work with today is y equals 2x plus 1. Now you remember from the other day when we did y equals mx plus b, find the equation of a line, that the coefficient of x is the slope and this number on the end, when it's in y equals mx plus b form, is called the y-intercept. In the equation y equals mx plus b, the y-intercept is the b value and the slope is the m. Now, the first thing we do uh, is we put the y-intercept on our graph. So I'm going to go right to my graph and I'm going to put one, I'm going to put a mark where one is on the y-intercept. So here's one and I'm going to exaggerate my mark, put it in red and exaggerate it, make it bigger because I made my lines with a sharpie then they're quite thick so I have to exaggerate my line, my point so you can see it. Okay, so that's the first step. And now we have to work with the slope having put the y-intercept there. Now, if you could think of the slope as a set of directions when you're using the slope-intercept method, that would be helpful. When you look at a slope, it doesn't appear to be a fraction, but uh, I want you to think of the slope as a fraction even if it's not written as one. So 2 would be 2 over 1. 3 would be 3 over 1. Negative 4 would be negative 4 over 1 and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down here where I have more room and I'm going to explain how the directions work for the slope. Okay, so if I have 2 over 1, remember the other day when we were doing y equals mx plus b, delta y over delta x, y is always on the top. It's always the numerator of the fraction. It's always y over x. Now I'm going to switch pens here and use a finer point so I can do some writing. Okay, so on the top we have y. Now look at the y-axis on your graph. It's, it's the axis that, that goes up and it goes down. So the y number on the top um, or the numerator, it tells you to go up or down. And the x number, let's look at the x-axis. The x-axis goes right and it goes left. So it tells us to go left or right. 
And it all depends on the signs. And we're going to do that now. Okay. So, um, on the top, in the numerator of the slope, if it's um, positive, go up. If it's negative, go down. And that's just so important. It's, it is a set of instructions. Now the um, x number in the denominator of the slope um, tells us to go left or right. If it's uh, positive, we go right. That's what you're thinking. I know it was. And if it's negative, we go left. Okay, excellent. I think you have that. So let's look now and finish our graph. You're not going to have to do this every time. I just wanted to explain to you how these instructions differ when you have positives and negatives. Okay, so our first example, we have uh, a slope of 2 over 1. Now, if I look at that bottom number, it's positive. Uh, it's an x number. So if it's positive, I go right. So we start again at the y-intercept, and looking at that number on the bottom, it tells me to go right 1. Now, I don't have graph paper, so I'm doing the best I can, but I, I think it's okay. And then, the number on the top, the y number, tells me to go, it's positive, so it tells me to go up. How many? Two. Now, I put that first one in red, I should put the second one in red, just to be consistent. Now, I didn't make my y-axis, I didn't number it enough. I usually do um, two extra points, so I'm going to do one more point. So, the slope is constant, it's the same all the way up. You could do it um, from here uh, forever, and it would be right one up two, right one up two, right one up two. And I'm just going to do it one more time. Right one up two, and there's my point. You can see. And now I'm going to take my ruler and one of these pens, one of these markers that I have. And it's much easier with graph paper, believe me. And that's all there is to it. Okay, the second example that I'm, um, I'm going to do today is y equals 3x minus 1. Now, uh, remember that the slope um, always ha is a fraction, although it may not be written that way. So let's change this to 3 over 1x minus 1. So I'm going to go to the uh, y-axis at negative 1, and then I'm going to put my mark there. I'm overemphasizing that mark, putting a very thick dot. And this time, um, the bottom of my fraction, the denominator tells me um, to go right 1, so that's what I'm going to do. There's my right 1. And the top of the fraction, the numerator, tells me to go up 3. So 1, 2, 3. I don't have graph paper, so it may look like my, my lines are a little bit um, crooked here. 
uh, they are supposed to be straight and if you use graph paper that's what will happen. You'll get nice straight lines. Now the next thing, I, I always do a couple of these um, points uh, just so that I, I make sure my line is, is drawn the right way. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go right one and I'm going to go up three. One, two, three. So I'm at two and five. Now I'm going to take my ruler and draw that line. And there you go. And you can extend the line um, forever, really, in um, either direction. But you, know, you only have to go so far. But I like to extend it a little bit. Now the um, third question that I have is y equals negative two-thirds x plus six. Now, <clears throat> I didn't, e I don't even have six on here. Doesn't matter, I can put it there. Six. And um, it's actually going to end over here a little bit more. Or, I, I didn't mean end as much it it's going to cross the x-axis way over here and I didn't put enough um, numbers on my x-axis. Okay so the first thing I do is go to 6 on the y-axis and I I put a, a dot there and I'm making it rather enlarged and exaggerated because my X and Y axis are so thick. Uh, now, if you look at the denominator of the slope, it's a 3. Uh, if there's just one uh, negative sign, um, I find it easier to just put it on the top. So let's call that negative 2 on the top and 3 on the bottom. So we have 3. Um, so what I have to do is go right 3 from 6 on the y-axis. So I, I want to be careful that I'm doing this correctly. If you do this on your graph paper, it'll be nice and easy for you. So I'm going over 3 to the right. And now this number on the, on the top of the slope, the numerator, is a negative 2. Now negative means I have to go down. Remember that explanation at the beginning? Uh, so I'm going to go down two, like that. Now I'm going to do that uh, another time. I'm going to go right three, take me to six, and then I'm going to go down two, and that'll take me down here to two, like that. And if I did it one more time, uh, I would go right three, one, two, three, and down two. And you see why I uh, extended my x-axis? Because I knew that was going to cross at nine. So now I'm going to take my ruler and connect those points. And there's my line. And you're probably already seeing um, how nice this is to work with, the slope-intercept method. And I have one more that I want to show you. And the last one is y equals 1 half x minus 2. So this time, we'll start at minus 2 on the y-axis, so I'm going to, actually I have a, I have a red um, marker here. I'm gonna, maybe I'll use red, it's easier to see. So at minus 2, I put my dot, and this time the slope, the, the denominator of the fraction is 2. That's the x value, so I go 2 to the right. So I'm going to go 1, 2 over, and 1 up. So up 1. See that? I could make that red for you if you, if 
you are having a hard time seeing that. And then I'm going to do it again, right two up one, so it's going to cross the x-axis right there at four. We have three pens on the go here. So there we are. y equals one half x minus two. And that's how you do the slope intercept method. Now I, I probably will tell you with each lesson that practice is so important. And I think you know that anyway. Um, be patient with yourselves. I, I know that you can do this. Um, if you could do the first lesson that we did, uh, this lesson, uh, will seem easy, I'm pretty sure. Now the um, the textbook that I am using uh, is called uh, Foundations and Precalculus Mathematics 10. And the publisher is Pearson. It has an orange and purple front cover. You don't need to um, be using this particular textbook. Any um, grade 10, math 10 uh, textbook will have uh, linear equation slope intercept method in it. You just need to find um, the exercises um, in your uh, particular book. I'm going to ask you to do um, some homework uh, today. And your homework from the book uh, is page 362, number 4, 5, 6, 7, A, B, C, D. 11 and 12. And uh, that's today's lesson. Thank you very much. Hope you're having a great day.